Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to your Lunch Break Live. My name is Ivana Herin-Q if you're new here, and if you're not, thank you for coming back. Today is Monday, August the 29th, and today we're talking about what I know a lot of you have been talking about all morning, and that is the, or was, the expected launch of NASA's Artemis mission this morning. Now, as you probably know by now, that mission was called off. That rocket did not launch. So today I am joined by our reporter, Lee Root, who has been covering NASA space and all things related uh, to that industry for decades. Lee is going to explain a little bit about the rocket, what happened this morning, and what is next. So, Lee, thank you for joining us here today. I know you've had a very early morning. I know you went to what was supposed to be a watch party this morning, which, of course, ended up disbanding. But first, tell us a little bit about this Artemis One mission that was supposed to launch this morning and why it did not get off the ground. Sure. Uh, glad to. Uh, th this was the first of three launches that NASA has planned to return to the moon. And I think one of the first things we got to remember right off the gate is, uh, you know, we do a lot of launching to the space station. We have a lot of companies that are involved in rocket, you know, building and launching now. But going to the moon is an entirely different thing. It's 200 and almost 240,000 miles away. It's a significantly harder thing to do. It takes a bigger rocket and it's going to be up there for a long time. So it's been hard to develop. Uh, but we have three missions planned. They're basically built on a rocket that's sort of relying on the original engines from the space shuttle, the four uh, SR-25 uh, main engines. And that's kind of the why, why it's the way it is with two solid boosters, one on each side. This was going to be the launch will be the launch when they get it done. This will be the launch that lifts them off, takes the takes the uh, capsule around the moon, no people on it, checks everything out, comes back. Second mission, uh, it will go up. There will be a crew on it, two people. They will go around the moon, that will not touch down, come back. And then the, finally, the third mission, we will actually go and land uh, the next Americans on the surface of the moon. So that's that's what was happening. We were supposed to launch the first one today, just to send it up there and wrap it around the moon, uh, but it didn't happen. So I know, I love how you broke down kind of the stages here, and that's kind of in a nutshell what this Artemis mission is. So the mission number one, that unmanned rocket was supposed to take off this morning. It didn't happen. And you already kind of mentioned those engines. So I know those engines had something to do with why the rocket didn't get off the ground this morning. So tell me what we know about that problem and what's going to be done to fix it. Well, there are four uh they were originally space shuttle main engines uh, that are under the rocket. There are also two solid rockets, those tubes that you see on either side. And there's a joke at NASA that if they like those things, you're going somewhere because they don't have a throttle. They don't have an off switch. So they don't like those until they get these uh, these liquid fuel engines running. And what they do to start with is they fire, they rev them up on the ground to kind of get them all at the same temperature. They get them warm and ready to go, and then they cool them back down, and then they fire it up for real, and it goes. And they had one uh, one engine, uh, I think, uh, one engine this morning that wouldn't cool down as much as they wanted it to. They couldn't get it cooled down to the parameters that they wanted. So don't know why. Uh, that's an anomaly. Is they, That's not supposed to happen. So they eventually scrubbed uh, the launch, and, and, and that's why. Now, tell me, what is the purpose of lighting those engines, cooling them down, and then doing it all over again? Well, they want to check the flow of the liquid oxygen fuel. They want to make sure it's all going to all the rockets in the same way. They want to make sure the rockets are, be uh, I mean, the engines, rather, are behaving the way that they're supposed to and throttling up and throttling down the way they're supposed to. They're looking for just this kind of thing, actually. Uh, uh, well, that one's not running like hot like it ought to be, or that one's running too hot, or... Uh, and this uh, this is really supposed to be fairly routine at this point. They've run these engines, not these specific ones, but these engines have had a lot of experience. And so exactly what happened, we'll have to find out. But that's what they do. They want them all the same degree of warmth and then they want to cool them down and then start them up and go. And Lee, why can't that be done before today? Why can't that be done yesterday, day before yesterday? Why did they wait until it's about to be takeoff time to kind of do this little run through with those engines? Well, that's uh, 
you know, they have tested them, uh, but that's a really good question. I think it's a big job to fuel them. It's a big job to get all of that uh, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen in there that they're going to mix. They fuel it on the stand. Um, you know, they, they have actually done this. They've actually tested these very engines at the Stennis Space Center, uh, which Marshall Space Flight Center here in Huntsville also manages. They did that. They had a flight engine test. You may remember uh, uh, some months ago, eight months ago, maybe. And they did that very thing. They put them on, they fired them up, you know, heated them up, fired them, it all worked fine. You get it down to this there and, you know, it's like you can't, you know, you can't get the camera to work when it's Christmas morning and you want to take the picture. I mean, they're not sure, I think, exactly what happened. So Well, and it's also, and this is boiling it down to the nth degree and just taking something, again, that is so uh, insanely complicated and, and really breaking it down into layman's terms. But you, you mentioned, again, that it's like trying to get the camera to work. It's also a lot of us have been working from home. Lee, you and I are obviously at home. We've been at home for almost three years at this point. And we all had to get adjusted to working from home, to the tech of working from home. You and I were just laughing about it, trying to get cameras working, get meetings going. And that is just kind of the boiled down version, it seems like, of some troubleshooting that, that they're doing here. Now, something I want to ask you again is, is, again, about these engines. And you mentioned that they have been fired up before, even before the Artemis mission really got going. And that is because these engines have been uh, essentially recycled or upcycled, some might say, from missions that happened decades ago. They they have been in storage and they are taken out of storage for these new Artemis missions. Tell me a little bit about that and why these engines are not new, why we're reusing these engines. Well, we built them, uh, we built them for the space shuttle program and they're, uh, the RS-25 engine, it's a really, really good and reliable engine. And they built, you know, more than the program I think ended before the engines ended. They ran. They ran out of uh, of launches. The, we decided to stop doing the, the space shuttle. Uh, but they had these. They had. I wish I could remember the exact number, but it's not inconsiderable uh, number of these engines left over. And uh, they were in storage down at uh, the Stennis Center. I remember going down on a tour one time and seeing a bunch of them. And they said, "Well, these engines are just too good to mothball forever. They're just." You know, we've got them. They're reliable. It, we could spend millions of dollars developing something new, uh, or we can we can try to make these work for us at least for now for the for these next set of missions. And so that's what that's what NASA did. And taxpayers might be happy about that today, maybe not. But uh, I think it was probably a good move. And and so they took them out, and uh, they've been test fired. As I said, they they know these engines backward and forwards. They have a lot of experience with these engines. Um, it, you know, and what happened today, it, you know, sometimes you have a bad day, but uh, they'll, they will figure it out. It's a good you engine. Know Lee, you talk about these engines and you make these points of why to reuse the engines. And again, we, we know that uh, the, there was not the funding to develop new engines. Again, these take millions of dollars. And you mentioned that. But question here is some of these engines were developed in maybe even the 1980s. So these engines go back decades and decades. Now, I am not an engineer nor an astrophysicist, but I have to imagine the technology today in 2022, or even several years ago when these plans really got underway, must be incredibly different than technology was when these engines were developed in the 80s. So how does that technology remain relevant all of these decades later? Well, that's a really good question, and and it is true. There there have been advances in in engine technology, and um, this time it might be the time to mention that this program itself is sort of a compromise. Um, there are some people that wanted to just scrap the whole thing, scrap the engine, scrap the rockets. Let's kind of move on. Let's rely more on the new space, uh, you know, guys like Elon, and uh, let's let's develop a new way to do it. And uh, other people thought, no, we, we, we've got this, you know, pool of engines, we've got this pool of expertise, we can't just rely on one or two uh, suppliers. And it was a raging uh, battle back uh, it, around, mm, you know, probably about 10, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, around 2011. And they forced compromise. And the compromise was we will 
put this rocket together based on what we know. We will use these engines that will cut the cost of going back to the moon. We will go back. We will take, you know, uh, we will take the first person of color. We will take the first woman to the surface of the moon. We've now found out there's a lot of things at the surface of the moon we didn't know a while ago, uh, including the uh, ice, which can be used to create more rocket fuel and also possibly some precious jewels and things that we could mine there. So we, we're going to go back to the moon. We're going to use it as a proving ground. And then we're going to go to where everybody wants to go, which is Mars ultimately. But so it was a compromise. And that that's um, it would have been bad to go out to the curb one day and see, you know, three dozen rocket engines out there waiting to be recycled too. So it, you can, you can kind of argue it in, in several different ways. And uh, there is a, there's still a division about whether NASA and the government should be doing this. Or not. But, well, and Lee, you mentioned to me that again, you mentioned Elon Musk and kind of the new era of space travel. And some of those rockets are being developed again in Huntsville where you are located. And again, I know you were steeped in the yeah. NASA and the Marshall Space Flight Center area in Huntsville. Tell me about his yeah. engines. How different are those engines versus the engines that NASA was trying to use today on this Artemis mission? Well, I wish I could. I'm not that familiar with e with Elon's ish, uh, engines. I know they're very reliable. I really, I really would be afraid to tell you much about them because I might, I might get it wrong. I, I know, um, I do know that he is developing. He has smaller rockets that he's that he's sending, you know, to the space station very successfully. And uh, excuse me, my dog is out about something. Uh, hush. So, um, I, I know, uh, he's got, he's got the engines, but even, he, even Elon has decided that he needs to build a giant rocket. And that's what he's working on now. If he's going to go farther, you need the bigger rockets and, and that's what we don't have. Well, you know, it is, uh, you, you had mentioned to me too, that there, there is different ways, there is new technology to use these rockets. But at the end of the day, the styling is very similar. This is why a lot of these rockets look very similar. There is a formula that works and people do not want to essentially break what's working, you know, don't reinvent the wheel here. So did that kind of factor into some of this as well? I'm going to turn this beast loose and see what happens. Uh, yeah, there's yes, there there's definitely physics that applies, and and uh, the 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 finer the point that you can uh, uh, you can have going into space, uh, the easier it's going to be. The more streamlined you are, the more easy it's going to be. So I'm going to hold on a sec here. There, you know, it is just a, it's amazing. And again, Lee, you and I were joking a minute ago about how you said you were an English major. I, I was a journalism major. So this is something that is, of course, above our heads here. And uh, some of this science here is just so overwhelming, but you've done such a great job at breaking this down, telling us what exactly happened. Now, one final question for you, Lee, when can we maybe expect to see this rocket get off of Earth? Well, uh, they're, they're looking at trying again uh, as early as, I think, Friday. And uh, they're going to flush it all out and go in there and see if they can figure out what's wrong. Uh, they would like nothing better than to tank it back up and launch it. Uh, so there's, there's, a, there's a launch opportunity Friday. If they, can't, uh, if they can't get it off then, it's going to be, it's going to take, you know, it's going to take some more time, a few weeks to a month to really get it cycled. They need the launch pad for other things as well. So... Hopefully, hopefully we'll get it. Uh, we'll get it off the ground on Friday. Friday is again our our backup day. It is now hopefully go time. They have several days to get this working. I heard this morning there were about ninety one engineers uh, in that command center trying to figure out what the problem is. So I have faith in them, and uh, I sh I feel certain that they will figure it out. So Lee, thank you for all of your information here. I know you got to go to a watch party this morning in Huntsville at the Marshall Space Flight Center, and uh, that some of those photos were very cool there. So we're going to share those as well on this page. So. Again, Lee, thank you for breaking this down. Thank you for your reporting. And uh, it's safe to say that hopefully we will see you later this week talking about a successful launch. Let's do it. Let's get together and talk about how it looked when it went up. Absolutely. Lee, thank you so much. Everybody watching, thank you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.